Well, you know, I, I, I never saw this movie, but I saw a picture of it, and um, you played a hippie and Bunny O'Hare. <laughs> <laughs> and we went around, Betty Davis and I playing hippies, we went around robbing banks. <laughs> uh, don't anybody get any ideas. But uh, we had a wonderful time together. We really did. And uh, she was so wonderful to work with. That was my second picture with her, Bunny O'Hare. The first one was called The Cated Affair. And uh, she was quite a gal. People say, of all the leading ladies you ever had, uh, who is the greatest? And I always say Betty Davis because she is such a marvelous person. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really amazing how many films you've done. And we were asking people what their favorite Ernest Borgnine uh, films were, have, you know, have been. And um, the, top, the, top one, the top ones in appearances are uh, uh, McHale's Navy, uh, Poseidon Adventure, yeah. and uh, Marty. Yeah, and Marty. That's, uh, can you... The okay. Wild Bunch is usually pretty good, too, with Bill Holden. And uh, another one they like is Emperor of the North with uh, Lee Marvin and myself. We had a wonderful time making that film. Work, my lord. I had finished, just finished 18 weeks shooting uh, Poseidon Adventure, and I had uh, Saturday off, and then Sunday I flew up to Portland and started another 18-week film with um, Emperor of the North with Lee Marvin. And uh, boy, what a... In, in Poseidon Adventure, you went through smoke and fire, and we lived with that. It was a pleasure to come out in the smog of Los Angeles, you know, after working all day long in that water and smoke and everything else. Well, I thought, by golly, here we're going to get a chance up in Oregon to really smell the, the fresh air and the pine trees and everything. And the very first thing they did was to lay down a big sm of smog and fog, you know. I said, well, wait a minute. <laughs> we just got through 18 weeks of this. He says, yeah, you're going to have 18 weeks more. So there you go. Isn't this beautiful countryside? Look at this. Gorgeous. Oops, somebody got a little fire going over there. Yeah. I heard that fight scene, with that one, that, that fight scene on the train. On a train, yeah. It took, it took 35 days to shoot that one. 35 days. We, a little bit every single day, you know. Right after we finished work for the day, we'd go up on the train and rehearse and then shoot a little bit more. And it took us 35 days. We had a choreographed like a, like a ballet. And uh, well, there were times we hit each other pretty good. Two by fours, chains, even an axe. Of course, it was a dull axe. But um, it was uh, it was a pretty hard thing. And you were doing it on a moving train, which is pretty rough. Were you good friends with Lee Marvin? Oh, he was, he was one of the dearest friends I ever had. And believe me, uh, it tore me up when I heard that he had passed away. But he was so obstinate, doggone him. He could still be alive today if he hadn't smoked so much. That's why I beg people, please don't smoke. It's the worst thing in the world for you. I used to smoke five packs a day until I got a a nodule up here in my throat and uh, I had to, I was going to start in McHale's Navy at the time and they had to operate to get rid of the nodule and I lost half my voice, believe it or not. You could have heard me over in the next county before before the uh, operation. And then it, that's it, a couple of good angry bellows and that, that's about it. Hey, somebody's got a fire going over there. How about that? Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, the, the, the Dirty Dozen is one of my favorite films. 
That was a great one. You know, Bob Aldrich was one of the best directors ever. Bob Aldrich and uh, Delbert Mann, I've worked with some beauties, I tell you, they're marvelous, marvelous people. Yeah. That must have been a fun set. Yeah. It was. It was. It was always fun. Uh, the very first time I ever worked with Bob Aldrich was in a picture called Vera Cruz. We were working with um, Jack Elam was in that with me too, and uh, we were working with um, Gary Cooper and Burt Lancaster at the time. Beautiful people. Unfortunately, they don't have their kind anymore. Yeah. As as directors or actors, sir. Ah. Uh, now you're pinning me down. I'd rather not say oh, that. No. No, okay, That's, I, I didn't mean. I didn't mean as as either. I just you know as far as the kind of. <coughs> uh, I mean, I, like when I said that that must have been a fun set. I mean, just some of the most. But you know, you became a family. Yeah. Today, the, the families are all gone in motion pictures. Uh, you go in, you do your two days, three days, a week, or two weeks, whatever it is that that you do, and then you're gone. And uh, that little family is all gone. Uh, everybody looks at you, you know, uh, uh, well, what's he going to do now, you know? And uh, But it, it, it doesn't hold together. Uh, there's no really family feeling on the picture. You, you know, that uh, The Dirty Dozen is the kind of film that once you start watching it, you can't stop. I know. I mean, uh, don't watch, don't start watching that at midnight because you won't go to sleep. It's like a good book, yeah. believe me. You can't put it down. Yeah. It, it, did you have any idea that the Poseidon Adventure would be such a groundbreaking film? I mean, it really... Well, I'll tell you how excited they were when... Uh, there was a new gentleman that came in, a new president of 20th Century Fox, and uh, Ir Irwin Allen, the producer, had put up money of his own to get the set started and everything else. And uh, the day that the new man took over, Irwin Allen went up to him and said, Sir, you know, we're, we're going down with, uh, with Poseidon Adventure. And he said, No, we're not. No, we're not going to make the film. And he, you've got to make the film. He said, I've got money invested in this thing. We've got sets made and everything else. No, we're not going to make it. That's it. And finally, through persuasion and everything else, the gentleman said, well, all right, if you have $6 million on my table tomorrow morning at noon, by noon, he says, we'll make the film. So Irwin Allen made two calls, got the $6 million, and presented it and said, okay, we got it. I said, fine. And the only thing that they did was to have a small percentage of, you know, the, of the, uh, whatever it was that they had. The thing went on to make, what, over $120 million. And uh, worldwide, it was absolutely renowned all over the world. And of course, that young gentleman, the president, was fired. <laughs> and Irwin Allen smiled all the way to the bank. <laughs> now those things happen. How did they turn the boat over? Let's stop tape here just for a quick second, change tapes and batteries.